Hi friends, good morning. You are at pink of your health, aren't you? Oh good, thank God. Now, you know, human life, it has different stages. Childhood, youthhood, adulthood, old days. Now I am in adulthood. What about you? You are in childhood. Okay. From my experiences, I should say, the sweetest period, it is the childhood, you are period. Why? You know, you are tension free. You are like a bird. Nothing to worry about. But, adulthood, so many things to worry about. So many responsibilities on our shoulders. Now, you are aged. That childhood is the sweetest period in your life. You just enjoy it. What's this title of this unit? Yes, Glimpses of Green. From the very title itself, we can say that this unit focuses on the very the beautiful nature and the Preservation, the importance of preservation of nature. Here, a story titled The Adventures in Banantry, written by the famous writer Ruskin Bond. In the story, the narrator shares with the readers his sweetest experiences of his childhood days when he blended with the essence of enchanted nature. You know, about Ruskin Bond, take a look at this profile. Ruskin Bond is an Indian author of British descent. His father was an officer at Royal Air Force. He wrote his first novel, The Room on the Roof, at the age of 70. He got John Leblin Rice Prize in 1957. His first children's book was The Angry River. In 1992, he received the Sahitya Academy Award for his short story collection, Our Trees Still Grow in Terra. He was awarded the Padma Shri in 1999 for his contributions to children's literature. He bought the Lifetime Achievement Award in, in 2017. He now lives with his adopted family in Lanto, near Missouri. Raskin Bond is an Indian author of British descent. That means he was an Indian, he is an Indian writer, but he was born to British parents. That's Indian author of British descent. Now, this adventures in a banyan tree. Here, Raskin Bone transports us to a world of endless activities in nature done by different variety of creatures. The very title itself, Dwenters in a Banyan Tree. What does it mean, this Dwenters? Yes, an exciting experience. Dwenters means an exciting experience, but it needs a little bit of risk factor. You might have heard about Dwenters of Huckleberry Finn. Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. But what about this adventure? Where is the, the those are, where are those adventures? In a banyan tree. Let's see what those adventures are. Here you can see, take a look at this uh, the picture of banyan tree. You know, mostly where are these banyan trees seen? Yes, very good. In temple premises, 
and you can see these old days people and youngsters sitting there cracking jokes and enjoying. They say, oh, you know, this it's a sort of uh, relief to old people. And we feel very cool if we sit under this banyan tree. You know what's the reason? From biological point of view, you just think. Yes, very good. You know, these trees are known as the lungs of nature. That means it liberates, these trees liberate oxygen. See, what's special about this banyan tree? Ben, banyan tree can liberate huge amount of oxygen during night time also. What about other plants? They can liberate oxygen only during daytime. That's why we are advised not to keep these uh, plants inside our home because during night time it liberates only carbon dioxide. But this uh, banyan tree has the capacity to liberate this oxygen even at night time. Uh, at the same time, it can liberate huge amount of oxygen. That's why we can say, figuratively, we can say the tree with the biggest lung, uh, biggest lungs. Let's move on to the first paragraph. Through the house and grounds of our home and into our grandfather's domain, the magnificent old banyan tree was mine. Chiefly because grandfather, at the age of 65, could no longer climb it. Grandmother used to tease him about this. I would speak of a certain countess of Desmond, an English woman who lived to the age of 170 and would have lived longer if she hadn't fallen while climbing an apple tree. The spreading branches of the banyan tree, we scurred to the ground and took root again, forming a maze of arches, gave me endless pleasure. The tree was older than the house, older than grandfather, as old as the town of Dera nestling in a valley at the foot of the Himalayas. So, you know, what are the points to keep in mind when you read a story? Yes, setting, then characters, then protagonist. About the setting, where is the story setting? Yes, can you tell me? The story is set in his grandparents' house in Dara, a town in at Dara, a small village at the foot of foothills of Himalaya. The next point, characters. What are the characters here? The boy, his grandparents and a grey squirrel. Who is the protagonist of the story? Protagonist means a chief character of the story. Who is that? Yes, the boy. How does the story open? The, the story opens with the, a beautiful description of this banyan tree. The magnificent old banyan tree. He makes some comparison. What about the first comparison? Yes, it's with a lady, Countess of Desmond. And uh, her real name is Catherine. She is nicknamed as Countess of Desmond because of her longevity. That's long lifespan. And uh, she lived for 170 years. She is nicknamed because of her longevity. That's long lifespan. And what's the purpose of highlighting this? To highlight the long lifespan of the banyan tree. Then, here's a reference maze of arches. What's this maze of arches? You know, this uh, hung root. These spreading branches, they hang to the ground and form some a number of twisting passages which become the dwelling places of different birds and animals like squirrels, snakes, etc. 
This is his maze of artists. And uh, next comparison is with ancestral house. That means Tarawo. We say Tarawo, that's grandparents' house. Here, the comparison is like this. The tree was older than the house. Older than grandfather and, and as old as the town of Dera. So, so, comparison with the ancestral house, comparison with the town of Dera. Then, look at these sentences. The, old, the tree was older than the house. The, it was an old banyan tree. The tree was older than the house. The tree was the oldest banyan tree in the town. So move on to the first sentence. The tree was an old banyan tree. That means it's a positive sentence. It's an old banyan tree. Basic adjective. Old is used. It's a descriptive word. So the basic adjective is used here, old banyan tree. In the second sentence, you listen, the tree was older than the house. Here, how many things are compared to here? Two things are compared to here. That means the old tree was compared to the house. Here, the comparison between two things or persons. It's comparative degree. The first one is positive degree. That means a basic adjective. adjective. Then second one is a comparison between two things or person. That's a comparative degree. Comparing two things or two persons. The last one, the Bandian tree was the oldest, it was the oldest Bandian tree in the town. That means comparison with more than two. Here it is called the superlative degree. That means a basic adjective, comparison between two things or person, more than comparison with more than two things of person. It's superlative degree. Degrees of comparison. We call it degrees of comparison. And you must bear in mind, when we use this superlative degree, it should be preceded by the definite article, the. It's very important. The oldest band entry. Then, take a look at the, these sentences. No other bird is as dash as the crow. Clever, cleverer, cleverest. Clever, basic adjective, comparative degree, the superlative degree. Which, can, which one can be used here? Yes, good. Clever, no other bird is as clever as the crow. Then second one, the grey mongoose was dash than the cobra. Aggressive, more aggressive, most aggressive. Which one is suitable there? Compared, comparison between two things. So, comparative degree. More aggressive. Then, third one. The banyan tree was the dash base on the throat. More than comparison. With more than two things. Which word can be used there? The banyan tree was the noisiest place on the foot. Okay, that's all. Then let's move on to the second paragraph. My first friend and family was a small gray squirrel. Adding his back and sniffing into the air, he seemed at first to resent my invasion of his privacy. But when he found that I did not arm myself with a cat, but oh, Egan, he became friendlier. And when I started leaving biscuits, pieces of cake and biscuit, he grew bolder and finally became familiar enough to take food from my hands. 
In the second paragraph, the boy, that means Raskin boy, he is sharing his childhood days. Now, when he was a boy, he how he enjoyed a pleasurable experience. That is the his friendship with the gay student. Children, in the second paragraph, the narrator narrates his pleasurable experiences of befriending with a gray squirrel. And uh, first of all, you know, what attitude, what was the attitude of that squirrel? Was he friendlier? No, never. Why? Because he was very much afraid whether he catapult him. You know, when he first of all, he was reluctant to be friend with this, uh, this boy. But gradually, he, be, he made a friendship with this boy. And at last, you know, this book, it, it was so bold enough to take food from his hand. And uh, he started delving into his pocket. Then, there's a bird, here's this arching his back and sniffing into the air. This is arching his back and sniffing. Squirrel arching his back and sniffing into the air. Then, next one, he, there's a word here, delve. What's the meaning of this delve? It means searching thoroughly and carefully. Then, the next paragraph. Here's a word here, headstrong. What does it mean, headstrong? That means unruly and silly. Firstly, Squirrel was afraid of the boy. He was reluctant to be French. Gradually, he became friendlier and trusted. He became bold enough to take food from his hand. He said, what? Headstrong. What does it mean? Headstrong means unruly and silly. See, you know, these animals are not so trusted. That's why this uh, squirrel, first of all, it was so reluctant to be friend with this boy. But gradually, there developed a special bond between this boy and the squirrel. That's why we can, how can you say that there's a special bond between this squirrel and this? We sentence tell you that, yes, he was delving into my pockets and helping himself to whatever he could find. Delving means a delver, means a searching thoroughly and carefully. Then let's move on to the next paragraph. In the spring, when the penetry was full of small red wings, birds of all kinds would flock into its branches. The red bottom bulbul, cheerful and greedy, gossiping rosy pastors and parrots and crows, squabbling with each other all the time. During the fifth season, the banditry was the noisiest place on the road. Yeah, that noisiest superlative thing. Now, you know, the season is now? Okay, it's a uh, spring season. And, uh, you know, this banditry also started yielding this red fits. Let's see this del red fits. Okay, these are, these are the fruits of this banditry, red fits. You know, it's very mouth-watering, right? During this time, there are so many visitors on this penitentiary. Okay, let's see who are those visitors. The red-bottomed bulbul, cheerful. It's a very greedy. Then, these pastors, parrots, crows. And uh, what did they engage in? Yes, they always engage in spamming. Squabbling means minor fight. And uh, so it becomes the noise space. Then move on to the next paragraph. Halfway up the tree, I built a small platform on which I often spend the afternoons when it was seem too hot. I would read there, propping myself up against the bow of the tree because cushions taken from the drawing room. Treasure, treasure Island. Huckleberry Finn, the Mowgli stories, 
and the novels of Edgar Rice Burroughs and uh, Louise May Alcott made up my bag of very mixed reading. Now, halfway up the tree, see, where, where did he make a platform? Halfway up the tree, listen. And uh, so, uh, why did he make such a platform there in the banyan tree? He wanted to, yes, he wanted to spend his leisure time by reading some books. Are you in the habit of reading these books during your leisure time? Yes, very good. Now, and what old books did he read? Did he used to read? Yes, Huckleberry Finn, Treasure Island, Mowgli Stories, etc. Then, when I did not feel like reading, I could look down through the banyan leaves at the boy below. A grandmother hanging up or taking down the washing, at the cook quarreling with a fruit vendor, or a grandfather grumbling at the hardy Indian marigold which insisted on springing up all over his very English garden. Usually, nothing very exciting happened while I was in the banyan tree. But, on and on one particular afternoon, I had enough excitement to last me through the summer. Now, this paragraph, when he, so usually, when we read for a long time, we get bored. Don't we? Here, this boy also, when he got bored, what could he do? Yes, he, when he did not feel like reading, he looked down through the, where, through the banner leaves at the board below. And what all things did he see there? Yes, he could watch grandfather, sorry, grandmother, hanging up or taking down the washing. The cook, yes, quarreling with their fruit vendor. Or grandfather, grumbling at the hardy Indian marigolds. These are the things he would watch looking through the leaves of the banyan tree. And where was he sitting? Yes, in the platform. Where was he? Where, where was it built? Halfway up the tree. Then, next paragraph. Well, take a look at a fight video. Just tell me who are the fighters here? Yes, a cobra and a mongoose. You know, it's a dramatic scene in this Indian background, the fight between mongoose and cobra. Here, in the coming paragraph, the boy shares with the readers a thrilling experience. First one, his Friendship with the squirrel, it was a pleasurable experience. Then second one, he is describing about a thrilling experience when he was, while he was sitting halfway in the banyan tree, halfway up in the banyan tree. Then, that was the time I saw 
a mongoose and a cobra fight to death in the garden. While I sat directly above them in the banyan tree, it was an April afternoon, and the warm breeze of growth in summer had sent everyone, including grandfather, indoors. I was feeling drowsy myself and was wondering if I should go to the pool behind the house for a swim when I saw a huge black cobra gliding out of a clump of cactus and making for some cooler part of the garden. At the same time, a mongoose, whom I had often seen, emerged from the bushes and went straight for the cobra. Here, so you already post a video about the fight between a cobra and a mongoose. Here that guy is sharing the thrilling experience, how he enjoyed that, that fight between these two fighters. In a, clear, in a clearing beneath the tree, in bright sunshine, they came face to face. Cobra knew only too well that the grey mongoose, three feet long, was a superb fighter, clever and aggressive. But the cobra was skillful and experienced fighter too. He could, not, he could move swiftly and strike with the speed of light and the sacks behind his long sharp fangs were full of deadly venom. Now, for the fighters, cobra and the mongoose. And what about the features of this cobra? Look, a mongoose, three feet long, super fighter, clever and active. Then what about Cobra? Cobra is a skillful and experienced fighter. He is able to fight swiftly and strike with the speed of light. Moreover, deadly venomous. Venomous means poisonous. Then here this aggressive meaning quarrelsome. Then defines meaning open resistance. It was to be a battle of champion. Here the boy described this fight, a battle of champion, a battle of speed. He seen defiance, his forked tongue darting in and out. The cobra raised three of his six feet of the ground and spread his broad spectacle foot. The mongoose pushed his tail. The long hair on his spine stood up in the past, the very thickness of his hair had saved him from bites that would have been fatal to others. Now, here, the reference about weapons. Now, for an attack, there may be some weapons. And what about the weapons of these two fighters? These two, in other words, combatant. Okay, fighters or combatant. Then, what are the uh, weapons for the fight? As far as this cobra is concerned, its uh, uh, weapon is broad spectacle hood. You know that hood. Then, mongoose, its bushy tail. That's the reference here. This bushy tail, it can uh, make use of that bushy tail whenever they meet this uh, enemy. And uh, here started the fight. Though the combatants were unaware of my presence in the banyan tree, they soon became aware of the arrival of two other spectators. One was a miner and the other, a jungle crew, not the very urban crew. They had seen these preparations for battle and had settled on the cactus to boost the outcome. Had they been content only to boost, all would have been well with both of them. Now, first, they started a fight between Cobra and the only two combatants. Who, are, who were they? Yes, Snake or the Cobra and the Mongoose. Then there, there arrived a third party. Who were they? Yes, good. A jungle crow. See, it's not a, this urban crow. It's Billy means, uh, Billy means cunning. These crows are known as very cunning and uh, you know it's not a cunning crow it's a jungle crow and the, who, are, who is the other one so first one 
this uh, um, mongoose, snake, then as it's uh, the fight was going on, two more arrived to boast this thrilling scene. And they were very eager to know who will win. And uh, then what about their participation? Did they participate? Did they, uh, did they uh, take part in the fight? Yes. They, they already host the preparation for the battle. Then they settle down on the cactus to host the outcome. And uh, had they been content only to host? If they had contented with watching only, they could have saved their life. Something happened. Let's see. Read and find what happened at last. Okay. Now, here are these combatants, you know, these fighters. So, take a look at that picture. The cobra stood on the defensive swaying slowly from side to side, trying to mesmerize the mongoose into marking a false move. But the mongoose knew the power of his opponent's glassy, unwinking eyes and refused to leave them. Now, you know the specialty of this uh, cobra. It's uh, glassy, unwinking eyes. See, glassy, unwinking. It, it does not have the ability to wink. It's a uh, blinking ability. It doesn't have that ability and it's uh, unwinking. Glassy eyes. And uh, the cobra stood on the defensive. Now, you know this uh, cobra stood on the defensive manner. Swaying slowly from side to side. What about the movement of this uh, cobra? You was in the video. Yes, it's uh, it raised up to uh, three feet, uh, three feet. Then spreading its hood and white key spread it or what for? Yes, to mesmerize the mongoose. Mesmerize means to hypnotize. Okay, the mongoose. So the aim of this, what about the aim of this cobra? Cobra wants to mesmerize the mongoose to make false uh, mark. That means to miss the target. Then, what about the mongoose? Mongoose, it's very clever. And uh, then what did the mongoose do? He knew the power of his opponent's glassy, unwinking eyes and refused to meet that eyes. Okay, clear? Then, what happened then? Instead, he fixed his gaze at a point just below the cobra's hood and opened the attack. Now, you know, this uh, mongoose know the exact target of the cobra. What's the target? It's a, the point just below the cobra's foot. And he started attacking. Now, the mongoose knew the point of attack. Where just below the, the point, just below the cobra's spectacle foot. So, the mongoose target is that the point just below the Cobra's foot. 